If you follow the VIX for long-term investing, you are in trouble. The VIX is based on a 30-day outlook going forward, and it's hitting lows it hasn't seen since April. But again, it is a short-term outlook on the risk, the downside risk involved in the market. It is not a long-term indicator. I know you guys out there. Your, our average age of a viewer is should not be worried about the short-term perspective of the market. All you're worried about is decades from now. And if you worry about decades from now, these short-term fluctuations shouldn't matter to you. Here's what the market's going to do over long periods of time. This is the market value, but here's what the market does. The VIX is only measuring this to this or this to this. That's all it's doing. And it tends to be a response to what's happened recently. Your job is a dollar cost average all the way across. And why is that? Because sometimes you'll overpay, sometimes you'll underpay, but you'll do this along the way. Schwab did a study recently where they gauged the returns of the market based on if you could perfectly time versus dollar cost average. And guys, over a 20-year period investing $2,000 per year, if you were perfect and timed at the bottom every year versus just dollar cost average, average, the difference was less than 10% total return over a 20-year period. It was $155,000 versus $138,000 or something like that. That is no reason to ever try to time because guess what? It still involves perfect timing, which you'll never be able to do. So just dollar cost average along the way. The VIX is useless for that. Now, in terms of the most common question I get out there, is the bear market over? Well, let's talk about it this way. From a short-term perspective, I have no idea. There are long-term bear markets, long-term bull markets, short-term bear markets, short-term bull markets. But let me give you three data points to sit there and show you from a long-term perspective where I think the stock market is. So first off, there is the 10-year cyclically adjusted PE ratio. What does that mean? So what it does is it takes the S&P's market cap, total market cap, and divides it by the 10-year earnings brought to today accounted for inflation. Historically, that's around 15 or 16. What is it today? It's around 31, double. Okay, so that's that's one indicator. Granted, it is pretty reliable, but that's one indicator saying that we have a lot further fall to go. Okay, so let's pick another one. The price to sales ratio. So what's the price to sales ratio do? It looks at the total stock market GDP and divides it by all the revenue of all the companies within that stock market index. Historically, it's around one. Right now, it's at 2.5. All right, so that's also screaming that it has to fall by half or over half. Now again, that's another indicator. Let's ignore that one. The final one is the stock market to GDP ratio. This is the one that Warren Buffett considers the most accurate at any given time measure of where the stock market values are. It takes the total stock market GDP, or you can do it from an, an index standpoint, and divides it by GDP. Historically, you want to be around 80%. We're currently at around 160%. So guys, three indicators that are very reliable over history correlated to future returns. And they all say the market has to fall in half. So from a long-term perspective, where do I think the market's going? Well, let me pull up my chart again. This chart right here, over the stock market is with these fluctuations, wherever you're at, I think we're here. I think we've seen the peak of the market and I think we're gonna go down much further. Now, what does that mean? Well, first off, I could be wrong. Fundamentally, the stock market could go higher and higher because the US economy explodes and goes like crazy. But if you look at history, at these extreme valuation levels, that tends to not happen. What tends to happen is it's easier for price to fall than for fundamentals to get better. But from this perspective, you're hearing this and going, oh my God, this guy is so scared. I'm not scared and you shouldn't be there. Your goal is to be a long-term oriented person. You should embrace bear markets. Bear markets are an opportunity for you to buy stocks at cheaper prices. And if you dollar cost average into a low cost ETF that invests in the entire stock market, you are going to kill kill it in the long run. You're absolutely going to slaughter. And here is why. Their study after study has shown that people who try to get in and out based on fear make about 70% less return than the stock market does over 20 year periods of time. So what does that mean? Just dollar cost average month in, month out. That's all you need to do and you will crush it. You don't need a financial planner. You have YouTube. I'm here to help you learn. I am here for that reason. I started this channel to help people learn how to do this. I'm a value investor. My goal is to buy assets at lower prices than what the market perceives it to be. That's my goal. And that takes patience. But we all have patience in us. We all do things all the time that take a long period of time. We went to school. We were patient. We were in relationships. We were patient. Be that way with your money. Be around like-minded people who can sit there and talk about the good. I sit there and tell people when times are best, that's probably a time to be cautious. But when times are bad, 
you're going to look at me and you're going to say, oh my God, this guy is positive. Let me tell you a story. Back in 2008, I had my money at Merrill Lynch. I still do. I manage the money myself, but the advisors still have them. An 08, 09 financial crisis were occurring. I literally have emails showing advisors saying to me, you're the only call that I enjoy because you're the only one speaking positively. This is an absolute testament. I'm not that guy who just says that I like stocks cheaper, but when it happens, I'm scared. I literally look forward to red days. Now you might sit there and say, what a sociopath. I don't blame you. But when you're fearful and you're hearing somebody talk out there about why it's a good thing and they're actually using their money to go buy more assets, it's going to make you feel better. It's going to make you realize that, okay, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. Go back and look at our recessions. Go back, look at stock market crashes. Every time we had one, years and years later, you know what people say? I wish I'd invested down at the bottom. Granted, you know what they're actually going to say? Oh, I was buying at the bottom. No, they weren't. You got to be different. Dollar cost average make yourself into a robot that just buys month in and month out and never thinks about it. You will absolutely crush all your friends in investing. Absolutely crush them. You'll crush every financial advisor out there because guess what? They have career risk and they don't want to be losing money in the market. So they're going to pull their money out of the market when it's the wrong time to be doing it. They're going to pull your money out of the market. You can do it yourself. We have this full community. We have our software here and this community of thousands of people who talk every single day who are like-minded, who think about how they want to be in with money and how they want to be is they want to take opportunities when they arrive and the opportunities come best when fear is highest. And when I say fear, I don't mean, oh my gosh, last month market was down 5%. People are scared. No, I'm talking about when markets are down 50, 60% and people say, I don't want to own stocks. That's when you need to own stocks. Nowadays, unfortunately, I still hear regular people giving me advice and telling me they feel bad for me because I don't get stocks. Even though the stock market is down 10% this year, people are still like, oh, Paul, it's, it's over. It's done. We're back into a booming market. Okay, that can't happen. You've got to get to the point where people are saying, I give up on stocks. They just keep going down. In the 2000 crash, we had three years in a row of 20% or more losses. I remember in June of 03, sitting in a meeting with some people I just got hired with. And one of the women there said, well, if you want to get good returns, you shouldn't invest in stocks because you only get three or 4% there. I remember thinking to myself, damn, really? I wish I'd known then what I know now, which is that was my indicator that we were either at a bottom or very close to it. I run Ironically, go look at where stocks were in June of 03 and the S&P versus what it did in the future. It's unbelievable. If you just operate based on everybody's fear, you'll probably do very well. But I'm asking you to pick the simplest route dollar cost average into low cost ETFs. But if you like what I'm saying, and if you realize that the, the more you understand, the more you learn, the less you will fear, and you want to buy individual stocks, keep watching our channel. We talk about individual stocks and that every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And you'll learn a better process for evaluating companies going forward. I absolutely know for a fact that recessions are a good opportunity. So if that makes sense to you, watch our next video where I explain that. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what I've said. Thank you very much.